So at that very moment, you, you, within your heart, you were feeling that Something's something going on. was wrong. I care too much. And that was the pivotal moment when you actually decided to change your career. That was within, yeah, within a few days. Dr. Evan J. Hassan, founder of Specific Chiropractic in Boca Raton, Florida. Specific Chiropractic challenges the status quo of healthcare by providing uniquely tailored and non-invasive spinal care with the goal of improving the health and well-being of those young and old naturally. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. Thank you very much for having us. And here I am with Dr. Hassan. He is from a specific chiropractic, and he's got an incredible story for us to share today. When I actually read your story, um, I was really impressed by the fact that you were actually working as a pharmacist, oh. and then um, you had that aha moment. It was actually what changed your life. Mm. It was a pivotal moment that you decided, um, you know, you said, I'm actually making medicine for people to cure people, but I'm actually not helping people to get cured. That's mm. how you felt, basically. Yeah. But what happened? Tell us. Oh, the actual experience? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So, one day, it, was, it was a Sunday afternoon, I was in the pharmacy. And one of my pharmacy managers that I worked with, he came into the pharmacy and um, he, he just seemed very down and depressed, a little slunched over, upset. And I can usually tell when someone's upset. So I, I said, hey, so what's, what's going on? He said, oh, my doctor told me I have type 2 diabetes. And I said, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, did he give you a prescription? He's like, yeah, he gave me a prescription for you know, this medication. And knowing what I knew, all I knew about healthcare and sickness and disease and at that moment in time in my, in my life, I thought when you're diagnosed, you're sick, you listen to your doctor, right? Who else are you going to turn to at that point, right? Who gives you a prescription and you fill it and you take it as directed. You take the medication. I never thought of what else is possible. So at the moment you were going to school, you were going to FAU, what were you studying? I was, I was doing the it's called the pre-health professionals, similar to a pre-medical, pre-pharmacy route. So I was taking the chemistries, organic chemistries, biochemistries, laboratories, very immersed in the sciences. Right. And um, we don't learn too much about what's outside the box. And you're looking at your manager and you're like, how can I help you? How can I help? Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, my loving, caring self. I asked him, do you want me to fill your prescription? Because that's really all I can do for him. Right. That's all I know. So he says, he says, no, I'm, I'm not going to take that poison. I said, Those were his words. Yeah. I'm not going to take that <laughs> yeah. poison. And yeah. he's a pharmacist. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to take that poison. This guy, he's like 65 years old at the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's been a pharmacist for like 40 years. And, uh, and I said to him, I said, this, uh, this medication is pretty popular. Most of our... Our for clients, diabetes. And patients, yeah. Uh, yeah, the medication that, he, that he's prescribed is very popular. And most of our patients, maybe 30%, I would say 30% of the patients, they get this medication to help control their diabetes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, what do you mean you're not going to take it? And he says, well, my, my doctor, he said that if, you know, if I start doing exercising and changing my diet and my lifestyle and incorporate certain things, then I may not need it. Not everyone knew that. Not, not ever knows that. So I said, I said, wait a second. So you're not going to take this? He says, no, no, I'm going to try doing this route first. Mm -hmm. I said, well, have you told, this is a retail pharmacy we're working at. So we, 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 we saw maybe five, six hundred people a day. Right. At this, this pharmacy. And I said, have you told any of our clients, any of our patients that they can do other things to help get better? Right. And you know, make it more independent for their own health care, make it more in control, which we need. Uh, he says, no, it's not, it's not my job. It's mm -hmm. not my responsibility. Their doctor told them to take this, which they're in control of you know, direction, right? Right, so right. So you can't blame the doctor. Right. Really? Um, but the, the pharmacist's job is to take the prescription, make sure it's all correct. Refill, fill the prescription. Fill it, make sure there's no indications or contraindications for all the drugs they take. Right. And make sure it's safe within the guidelines that's in our society and government, laws, rules. Give it to the patient. 
So at that very moment, you, you, within your heart, you were feeling that Something's something going on. was wrong. I care too much. And <sighs> that was the pivotal moment when you actually decided to change your career. That was within, yeah, within a few days, I start thinking, 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 um, and uh, I actually, I talked to my, my girlfriend at the time, who's now, we share her last name, but I heard the word chiropractic back then, I think, are they real doctors, or, and what do they do, and it sounds weird, because yeah. I never went to a chiropractor in college until I started thinking about maybe I should look into it, and uh, it turns out, chiropractors, I mean, the, the word chiropractor means by hand. Mm. That's what it means. So their whole philosophy is finding areas in the spine that just shift out of alignment and they put irritation to the nerves that control your whole body, right? And they just correct it and people start getting better. The one thing that I wanted to touch on is the why, right? Why you got into it. Once you've been raised to believe a certain way of thinking, yeah, that's normal, that's truth, right? And, uh, so it's a mindset. It's a mindset, yeah. Uh, so, so what I'm finding now with people I like meet and who are looking for another answer that they can't find, I'm actually having to uneducate people and then re-educate. Re-educate. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, a, that's an interesting experience. It's exhausting. Um, but as, you know, who else is going to do it? In that, I admire. Ooh. Okay, good. I really do. Oh, and I admire from your generation uh -huh. more than ever before. I have been talking to a lot of millennials and the fact that you guys now take a more conscious approach mm -hmm. to working and to entrepreneurship than ever before, than prior generations. Um, because you're, like you said before, it's not like you go and look for a job and you get a degree because you just want to go to work for to work for nine to five or to get a paycheck. You actually had a why. You said, I am not going to fill up at a prescription because I know that I have to give it to somebody and that somebody's gonna go home and take it and think that they're gonna get better. But see here's the thing. I'm also learning that not everyone wants what I want for them. Mm -hmm. It's not up to me. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own journey. So someone wants to go work, be a pharmacist, that's fine. It's a beautiful, it can help a lot of people. Right. There are, there are patients who don't want to learn something new. They're very satisfied where they are. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. They want to take their medication to control their symptoms. God bless them. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, you can't make everyone do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. They have their own journey. Right. You know, and. And you're okay respecting that. You but we're talking to. about your journey here. Oh yeah, my journey. Yeah. But part of the journey is learning about the people you're around. Right. You know, learning about the community. Learning you can't, you can't make people be what they're not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If, if, you know, I have many friends. Yeah, they have jobs where they go in, they do their thing, and they let go at, at 5 o'clock. They uh -huh. chill. For me personally, I'm, I'm thinking about the people I saw that day. I'm thinking about what I said to them. Because mm -hmm. the people that usually come here, they're looking for answers, right? For their health care, for their you know, situations, and their, whatever they're going on with their body and their life. Mm -hmm. And... I have to make sure that I told them the right things. I have to make sure my, my vibe when talking to people, communicating, really kind of came across because if I didn't get the message across what was really going on mm -hmm. and they don't get it, then they could think I'm weird, I don't make sense, or I'm, I'm quacky, mm -hmm. it's not mainstream so it's not true or something, right? I love that you use the word vibe. Because yeah. you care about connecting at that level. <laughs> oh, you kind of have to care. Yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of have to care. I, I try yeah. to get in tune with people because if I don't, yeah, then this person who's who came and they're sick, they're uncomfortable, and their their moods will be different. Their behavior will be different. Their vibe will be off. You and gotta you, connect. You have to connect. These yeah. people, if I don't if I don't get this message across when people come in, then they can be driving around. Right sick and, and get an accent. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, so that moment that you decided, okay, now I'm going to set up my own practice, right? Yeah, yeah. Then what did you do? So many of my colleagues from school, they've decided to work with other people. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to gain experience, which there's nothing wrong with that. Some people need it, feel they need it or want it, right? But I know that 
everyone does things differently. So I've always had this idea that I had to work and, and you know help help supplement income for my family. Back when I thought about going to pharmacy school and things like that, I had this this what I was talking about before, where that relief saying, oh, I don't really have to do it on my own anymore. I can just work for someone else. Mm -hmm. But then I came into this ethical, ethical, moral dilemma, like this is what I really want to do for people. Let someone else do that who wants to do that and doesn't see the big idea. Mm -hmm. So my mom said to me, she says, she says, Evan, I want to help you. Things changed. I want to, this is my gift to you. I said, I wanted to start very small, you know, I have the savings, a nice simple office and just grow from there. So mm -hmm. I, want to, I, want to, I want to watch it grow. So she says, no, no, you, you earn this, I'm gonna help you, you put a lot of work in. Um, she thinks I'm really good at what I do. And uh, she said, we're gonna find you an office. My mom's a commercial real estate broker. Mm -hmm. Helped find me an office and we, and we found a great location. You know, my address has all ones in it. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, so what ended up happening is, she helped finance like the build out because you know she knows, knows a lot of contractors help build it out so it was it was it was helpful so we built it out and no plan i i never really learned how to do that <laughs> plan things uh to that depth no business plan I mean, what am i gonna do i have to get people right. to, to know what i do and you've been in business in. for how long now like four years four years okay yeah so after the first uh, we built it out and um ready to open up, I open up my doors, and you know, I still kind of need a little bit of help here and there. So, 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 my, so my, we didn't have a budget or anything. She says, all right, Evan, I can't really help you anymore. I said, what do you mean? Can we have, you know, to make sure things flow? She says, I can't, I can't, so I, I can't help you. She, she, she helped build it out. So then I'm thinking, oh, wow. Well, I have to figure this out quick. Now you're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, but I didn't want this. I didn't want all this this uh, responsibility again. Right. So uh, I had to learn. I had to learn how to do things. So you know, there's, a, there's a nice used bookstore in Spanish River, right, <laughs> right down the road. Um, I probably spent a couple hundred dollars on like 30 different books. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have in my living room stacks and stacks of books with everything from mindset to you know, how to communicate properly and body language and and even some chiropractic books. Mm -hmm. um, Aside from getting the books, oh, yeah. did you um, get any coaching? Did you uh, coaching. Um, find any other resources outside from that? I've tried. I've tried reaching out to uh, successful chiropractors mm -hmm. in the area. And this one you know, nice guy, he says, yeah, I could help you. He wants to Charge me twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I'm you know new grad. I'm, I'm trying to figure things out. I don't really want to take. I can't take that risk right now, so that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And then you know I'm on I'm on several Facebook groups, and I where brother my colleagues get get uh, manhandled from different coaching companies, paying them X amount of money a month, and doing all these things that are just so you were basically me. figuring everything out on your own. I, I, you I were... felt it all out. I felt it all out. Um, very careful, but I realize at the end of the day, I have to figure this out. Right. You know, there are people in worse situations that figure it out. Right. So I you learned. were trying to be resourceful. You said, I am on my own. I have to figure it out. You know, yeah. I need to do whatever it is, whatever it takes. More or less. It's on my own. More I got to do it. Okay. More or less. And um, I, you basically have to rely on yourself, just like I've done my whole, most of my life. Right. Clients have started to, I mean, patients yeah. have started to come in. You know, I was working with my web guy. Who was, mm -hmm. Who's one of my good friends? Uh, RemainRelative.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, and we worked with on the, on the websites for a few months because uh -huh. we know that's important. You yes. need to be available on the internet mm -hmm. nowadays. So is that how you're um, getting the majority of your patients? Is it online and social media? Currently, it's about eighty percent referral. Eighty percent referral. I, would, I mean, maybe seventy-five percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we have like one hundred and twenty reviews on Google. Okay. So, some people are happy. We have three really bad ones. I always talk about that. Cause that's, okay. you know, the bad ones stand out the worst. What are you doing about it? The bad ones? Yes. Like, did that's you, interesting. Yeah. Did you respond to those? Did you actually yeah. try to engage and what, try to... What am I going to say? I tell them there's obviously a miscommunication. Right. Because when you have 115, 20 other people saying you know, all praises, writing paragraphs about right. their experience, so right. maybe something's wrong. No, but you learn from this stuff. Exactly. You, you learn from how people interact every day. So. Every day when I come home, more or less, 
I think about my interactions with the people I I saw. Did mm -hmm. I say the right thing? Was I was I too harsh? Was I was I not harsh enough? Mm -hmm. um, how did I adjust them? How, how they're doing? I I think about calling them, but I think oh, maybe it's too much. Mm -hmm. You know, let them live their life. Um, but I love that you're saying that because yeah. you're taking it as a learning experience. You're taking yeah. it as every experience, every interaction. You know, I can take something from it, and yeah. I can be better from it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I end up doing. I'm not too strict about it. It just kind of just happens naturally. Right. Um, I'm a firm, I'm a firm believer is you're not the same person as then than now because mm -hmm. you experience different things like a recipe, like you're making bread or something. Mm -hmm. You keep adding ingredients to your life. You're gonna have a different bread every day mm. if you allow it. Right. You have to be willing to be open to accept things. Right. Mm. That's that's a pretty good analogy. I like that. Right. I want people to share right. because. Is the, the real deal. The, it's, yeah, it's, they, they're feeling it. They're they're living it. They're living it, yeah. and they're actually they're selling for you. And, and actually, you know, this is a time where you actually could really give good advice to oh. other entrepreneurs. Like, if there is any, if you had an audience full of entrepreneurs out there, now you find something you're passionate about. Remember, whatever business you're in, it's all about the people. It's it's service, service before self. Unless you're like you're killing yourself working, that's you don't want to do that. But you know, within reason, you're it's a service industry, restaurants, doctors' offices. You're a people person. You're dealing with people. You know. Yeah. People, people, people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Such a pleasure to meet you and meeting your wife as well. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you for having me. I had fun. Where can people find you? Specific with an S. Specific mm -hmm. chiropractic mm -hmm. of Boca Raton. Yeah. Um, you can give us a call. And you can search on Google. We have a website there. We offer uh, complimentary free consultation. Free consultation. Who doesn't like that? Come yeah. and get straightened uh, out. Look at the before and after. <laughs> we do try to limit them to like two consultations a week because we are pretty busy. Yeah. Um, so if you have any questions, concerns, you want to see if we can help, hear your story, give us a call. There you go. Leave voice now. And if you need any advice from an entrepreneur, you can call him as well. <laughs> Thank you so much thank for having you, me. You. All right. Thanks. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.